In this project, we're going to install a sub-panel in the garage. Uh, the reason we're doing that is we want to put a 220 outlet for a welder. Um, there is power out in the garage now, but it, uh, it's just a couple of small lines running out there uh, that would not be sufficient to uh, provide the power we need to run a welder. Here at the uh, service entrance, you can see uh, we've got 15 amp 220 service going to the garage to uh, uh, power the spa. And we also have two individual 20 amp uh, 110 services going to the garage. We'll be uh, replacing those four half slots uh, or two full slots with a two pole breaker to uh, send power over to the new sub panel we'll be installing in the garage. The reason the spa only requires uh, 15 amps uh, is that it has a gas heater and the power is used only uh, for the circulation pumps, uh, not to fire up a heater. So here you can see where the uh, line comes out of the house. We've got one inch flex going from the main panel under the house uh, to this 90 and then goes under the ground and comes up over here and you can see where it comes up out of the ground and it's right next to the gas heater I was telling you about. All right, so I don't know if you can see this, but the one inch line coming in from outside, carrying all the wires to the uh, garage, goes to a junction box. And then it's only a three quarter inch flex that goes up to the main panel. In addition to the garage wires, there was a circuit, one tenth circuit, so two wires coming out of a junction box to feed some outlets. So that was a problem. Fortunately, there's another half inch flex that was going over here to the outside to uh, an outdoor outlet, a GFCI outlet. And so we cut that and we're gonna take that half inch flex, go to an extension on the box so that the three quarter inch going up to the main panel is uh, completely free for our uh, six gauge wires and a three quarter inch is big enough for those uh, be a little bit of a tough pull but at least we won't have that other circuit in there all right so the original box only had one inch and three quarter inch cutouts or knockouts and being so close to the wall it was really hard to get at the knockouts anyways so we added an extension with half inch knockouts for the flex that we cut um, and then the new one that we extended back to the outside outlet. So we need to run four wires uh, through that three quarter inch flex which is the smallest conduit in the circuit and we need a uh, red and black uh, to provide the 220, a white neutral uh, for the 110 services and a ground wire. So as you can see from this chart, um, <clears throat> for a three quarter inch uh, metal flex, we can get four six gauge wires uh, in that three quarter inch flex. The six gauge wire should allow us uh, to use a 60 amp um, circuit breaker and a 60 amp service in the sub panel. Um, we're using THHN wire and uh, it's rated for 75 amps. The uh, one inch conduit is pretty much occupied by only the four wires coming from the main panel, uh, red, black, white, and the uh, green. However, in this little section here, from this um, conduit body down to this conduit body, we have 
two uh, 12 gauge um, wires, black and red, that feed 220 volts uh, to the uh, gas heater associated with the spa. But because we have a short little section where we uh, run that uh, two, two, two wires carrying 220 volts over to the heater, um, we'll discount that by 80%. It gives us our 60 amp service. All right, so <clears throat> this is where the wires from the main panel come in. Um, like I said, we want to put in a sub panel back here and then run from that. So what we'll do is where we have this feeding in through the wall, we'll replace that with a T-body and uh, continue to use that hole for um, sending wires over to the spa. They come out the top to a uh, new sub panel, which will be about over here on the inside. Now you'll notice that this is a little bit bigger, and so it wouldn't line up properly. But if we replace that two inch nipple with a close nipple, it should line up just about right. Let's see if we can show that to you. I'm not doing a terribly good job, but anyways, I think you get the idea that replacing that nipple uh, with the close nipple will get us where we need to be. Maybe you can see better here. You can see it'll line up just about right. Okay, so here you can see, um, or maybe you can't, I had a little trouble getting the old T-body off, so, uh, well, actually, I had trouble getting the nipple out of the old T-body and wound up taking the whole thing off, putting in a new T-body with a new chase nipple, uh, as we, or a uh, close nipple, as we talked about. In order to uh, do that, I had to take uh, the uh, little junction box off to the side and uh, we'll fix all that up as we go along. Okay, well, you can see we've replaced that uh, 90 with a T body, a conduit T body, so that um, our feed from the main panel up to our future sub panel will continue on up through the upper portion of that T body. Replace that right angle with a T conduit body. We rerun the wires that we're going to need. Uh, basically, the red and black, which will be 220 volts, go into our uh, heater. And that has to stay on even when the uh, spa no longer calls for heat because the fan keeps going. And then the yellow and blue, uh, which are basically a signal from the spa it's turn, trying to turn on the heater. That 220 volts goes to the relay up here. That relay basically takes the 220 and just closes the contact on the fireman switch, uh, telling the heater it ought to heat. So the uh, heater is powered all the time, but it can only go on when that uh, fireman switch is closed, uh, which only happens when the spa is calling for heat. All right, so here you can see I uh, <coughs> cut a hole in the wall where the uh, sub panels are going. Had to uh, notch. Uh, the two by four a little bit to get it into fit and um, yeah so we'll be uh, stationing that pretty soon and hooking up the wires all right so now you can see the uh, new 60 amp breaker and uh, that's the source of power for the wires going over to the new sub panel in the garage you see, we got that all wired up, and um, we took the spot or of the breakers that were there. It just had uh, basically two 20, 20 amp breaker for the spa and two separate 20 amp lines for the garage. 
Okay, so here you can see we've uh, completed uh, the conduit run and actually pulled the wires already. Uh, that top um, LB basically leads right into the uh, panel on the inside. And you can see that T body that we installed with the uh, close nipple worked out perfect and the uh, T branch fit right through the existing hull. So everything worked out the way we had hoped. Inside, you can see the uh, sub panel is uh, installed. The uh, flex was cut to fit to the uh, uh, sub panel to the top. At the bottom, we ran new conduit over to uh, some outlets. And we also uh, basically ran a 10 gauge wire for 220 30 amp outlet. Uh, and here is the NEMA 6 50R type receptacle uh, that most welders use. And it's a uh, 240 volt, obviously. And uh, it's all hooked up. So uh, we ran all the wires, hooked them up, everything is working. So uh, the next thing will be to get the drywall back and see if we can uh, make it look nice. All right, so now we got the drywall up. We still have to uh, patch the seams, but it's starting to look a little better. And uh, yeah, mission's almost over. So now you can see we started to uh, uh, patch the joints with joint compound and tape on three sides. Uh, the bottom, I used uh, some foam to fill in the big gaps uh, behind the conduit where it comes out of the wall. And uh, yeah, once that dries, we'll cut it flush and uh, do some joint compounding around the bottom as well. All right, so now you can see we uh, trimmed off the excess foam uh, gap filler and uh, we'll be able to just use our joining compound and tape over it and blend it right in with the drywall. Alright, so now we got some uh, joint compound and tape over uh, all the seams at the bottom. We're going to let this all dry and then uh, tomorrow we'll sand it down put on another coat. Alright, all done. Drywall's all patched up. Did a little uh, coat of paint, put the sprinkler uh, control box back up, closed up the uh, panel, stapled the cables to the uh, sprinkler control, uh, mounted the garage door opener button, and the telephone. So we're uh, basically project complete.